Good afternoon and also good morning and good evening to those who are following us remotely. Uh, welcome to the launch of the 13th Assembly Study Guide. We are uh, joining you today uh, from the Communion Office in Geneva and uh, we want to take the uh, upcoming hour, hour and a half, to reflect a bit together on what the study guide is. And uh, we have uh, a few of the people who have worked on the study guide with us here. So uh, we're going to begin by hearing from uh, General Secretary Anne Burkhardt. We will then hear from uh, the Assembly Coordinator, Marisa Camado. Then we're going to hear from Dirk Lang, who is going to explain a little bit the structure of the study guide. Uh, we will then share with you two short interviews we made with people who contributed to the study guide with Chad Rimmer and uh, Savannah Sullivan. And then we're going to speak uh, sort of in a Q&A format with Irineus Lucas, who is Regional Secretary for Europe. They just wrapped up their first, the, the first pre-assembly, and he's going to tell us how it was uh, used there, actually. Then we will open up for questions, uh, both from those who are here with us in Geneva and also those who are following online. And... Uh, and that's about it. So um, I think uh, that will suffice for an introduction. Uh, let me then introduce the LWF General Secretary, Reverend Dr. Anne Burkhardt. Anne, over to you. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone who is joining us online. It is such a joy and pleasure to launch the study guide for the 13th LWF Assembly today. The Assembly is the highest governing body of the Lutheran World Federation, which, means, which meets once in six to seven years. And it is the main gathering of the Global Lutheran Communion that brings together Christians from all across the world for worship, discernment, for learning from each other, but also for setting direction to the Communion for the coming years, and for speaking to the world about issues that are of concern for Lutheran churches. We are looking forward to a reflective, joyful, and transformative assembly, which will take place in Krakow this September and has a wonderful theme, One Body, One Spirit, One Hope. The theme is inspired by the Bible, more precisely the fourth chapter of Paul's letter to the Ephesians chapter 4 verse 4 there is one body and one spirit just as you were called to the one hope of your calling one lord one faith one baptism one god and father of all who is above all and through all and in all this is a theologically very rich assembly theme that calls us to reflect on our baptismal calling and its implications. Body, spirit, and hope are interconnected. Hope is the experience of God's spirit that compels us to bridge the gap between the all-encompassing peace and justice God has promised and the reality of the world in which we live. One body, one spirit, one hope also talks about unity that underlies all three parts of the assembly theme. LWF embodies a vision of communion which is expressed through our commitment to unity in the one body of Christ. Unity in Christian sense, however, never means uniformity. Just as God's call for unity never means imposing it. And this distinguishes it from what we see in many ideologies and hear from some political leaders. The study guide that we are launching today equips assembly delegates and participants to engage with the assembly theme, to reflect on what it means to be one body today, what the spirits of our time are, and what is the witness the Holy Spirit calls us to offer what our hope is, and how we can share that with the world. The study guide can also be used in churches, in congregations, across the whole communion. And we hope it will be and invite you all to read, engage, and share your reflections. 
If you do so online, you can also use the hashtag LWF Assembly so that we can also see it and have a share in your reflections. My hope is that this study guide will also help us to deepen our self-understanding as a communion. Our communion brings together churches who witness in very different contexts. And this is our strength. We are together, yet we are not the same. In their diversity, the LWF member churches are called to bear witness to God's compassion and mercy for the world. I hope that the study guide will offer inspiration in reflecting on how to best be messengers of peace, reconciliation and justice in the world that is so much in need of hope today. So use the study guides for your own preparations for the assembly. Use it in congregations working groups and other meetings to explore what the theme one body one spirit one hope tells to us today before i hand over to my colleague uh, marisa camado the uh, assembly coordinator for the upcoming assembly i would like to conclude with a prayer from the preparatory material for the seventh lwf assembly in budapest in 1984 and the theme of the assembly back then was signs of hope. O oh God, we pray for the Lutheran World Federation as it faces the challenges of a suffering and unstable world and the perplexities of conflicting ideologies. Fill it anew with your life-giving spirit, empowering it to cope with new tasks and responsibilities. Help us all to proclaim boldly and persuasively the coming of your kingdom in terms that people can grasp and that will bring them new light and fresh grace through the one who makes all things new christ our lord amen over to you marisa good morning good afternoon good evening to the global communion I was asked the question, how was the study guide prepared? I'd like to use the image of the whole village, which I have used already in the uh, European Assembly. A whole village was involved in the birthing process, but a very joyful village, as a matter of fact. The process started with one idea, then gathering of many ideas, thinking about the audience, the member churches, the participants of the assembly, framing those ideas to give some direction, endless discussions. And someone, of course, had to write. And then we had to critique that document and rewriting and writing and editing to make it a, a very rich document. Then one has to say, that's it. And we have an output. And that is the assembly study guide. So the early beginnings with, were with the former general secretary when we gathered actually as a staff for a discussion on what are the priorities of the churches now? What's the analysis of the church in the global communion? What are the burning issues? From there on, we tried to synthesize and package the different issues. And these ideas were shared with the assembly preparatory committee. With the assembly planning committee discussing this further, it was recommended to have the theme and the biblical text, and then recommended to the exicom, which was then further approved by the council. So with the approval of the governance, we had the theme and we had the biblical text. Then, during the time, it was COVID time, but uh, the council then constituted what we call the assembly thematic group. They were made up of representatives from the member churches, ordained, lay, men, women, and a youth representative. We also then had a thematic coordinator, and there were different and several virtual discussions in a one uh, face-to-face -face meeting here in Geneva. 
Given arrangements and agreements on the direction and the framework, the assembly thematic content group entrusted the writing to the staff, actually mainly to Dirk, to Chad, and to Faith then, coordinating the process. Writing was done amidst and in spite of other main responsibilities. Along the way, the staff working group also helped out and contributed and gave critique uh, to the draft to enrich the study guide. In the final leg, we had Chad and Dirk uh, uh, with writing the text and uh, the General Secretary Annie Borkart and also Arnie helping along uh, in finalizing the text. Given that it had, we had the final text before us, we submitted it to Pauline for our copy editing and had uh, it also laid out and um, worked into the final document that we have now. And now it is also being translated into German, into French, and into Spanish language. So now the study guide is born, ready for the world. The process did entail a lot of discernment, analysis, a lot of wisdom, a lot of to and fro discussions, also some challenges along the way, um, and a lot of prayers. They were passionate, we were all passionate about the study guide so that we can have something to digest, be inspired with, and immerse ourselves in it. So the process has been long and also has been a learning process for all of us, but the output that we have is a beautiful piece of high quality work. So the best way to get a good start on the theme is immersing oneself in the study guide. And we invite you all to look and read and uh, have discussions also as the general secretary has said on the study guide. Now I turn you over to our Assistant General Secretary for Ecumenical Affairs, Professor um, Dirk Lange, to share and explain on the structure and uh, the different directions of the study guide. Dirk. Thank you, Marissa. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I might not focus as much on the structure of the Assembly Study Guide as on its trajectory, getting at some parts of the uh, structure. Uh, it begins uh, with uh, the human experience, with the experience of, uh, of the church and the world today in a world that is more and more polarized and divided amongst itself. Uh, so we begin with human beings who live in an inherent tension. Uh, we have a deep yearning for fullness, for beauty, for completeness that makes us seek out uh, that fullness, that beauty in nature or in art, sometimes in other pleasures of life, in wealth, sometimes disastrously in alcohol or drugs, striving to find that perfect state of being. Yet at the same time, we feel restricted, constrained by our bodies, by our physical reality. We know this limitation, for example, when we're out in nature and we experience a beautiful sunset or a beautiful sunrise, and we know it will only last a moment. We can't hold on to it. But then, in the Christian story, something very surprising happens. In plain speech, we would say it's Christmas, the incarnation of God. God actually comes down to us and takes on a body. We want to escape the limitations of the body, and we discover God, spirit, taking on our limitations and our imperfections and saying, it is good. The body is good. We are not defined by a divide or a tension, but by a promise of life abundant. God is with us on this incredible journey in this life, in this world, with its many ups and downs. God's presence and promise are the one hope that encourages us onwards. 
So we are invited into a unique adventure of life, and this adventure is described in the Assembly Study Guide. The adventure is perhaps best described in the letter to the Ephesians, which uh, the General Secretary just read, Ephesians chapter 4. The letter to the Ephesians presents, if you will, God's plan for all humanity and, all, uh, and the whole cosmos. The one spirit, the Holy Spirit, is continually active in the body of this world, in individuals, in communities, in creation itself, drawing all things into God's promise of life, abundant. Opening ways of reconciliation, first reconciliation within oneself, then between ourselves, between communities, and within creation. God invites us into this movement of reconciliation to be co-participants in it. Of course, unfortunately, human beings tend to turn in upon themselves and reject or ignore this generous invitation. We follow our own plans and projects. Bodies then become stigmatized, judged, oppressed, or even killed, as we witness at, the, at Auschwitz-Birkenau. The spirit itself is distorted, polarized, even perverted for profit and other abuses. And the one hope of communion is diminished, restricted to petty, egoistic, or nationalistic agendas. This situation gives rise to many cries. And this is the first part of each chapter, listening to these, hearing these cries, cries of bodies, cries of minorities, cries of the marginalized, cries of creation itself. These cries are described, uh, as I said, in each section of the study guide. But then they are looked at through the lens of scripture and the perspective of the Holy Spirit, of God's promise. In the next section of each chapter, Eyes to See, we are invited into a gospel perspective, seeing in all creation God's work, promise, and love. These two sections are then followed by thanksgiving. Examples from the life and work of the Lutheran World Federation are given of the many ways in which bodies are blessings, of the many gifts given by the Spirit, and the hope that arises from God's unconditional promise of reconciliation. Each chapter then concludes with the catechetical question, the question of the small catechism. What is this? With some questions for your further reflection at home or in your, uh, in your church community and eventually at the General Assembly. This adventure that the Assembly Study Guide describes is in fact an adventure of our baptism. It is the adventure of reconciliation, of unity that is never uniformity, but an invitation to us as individuals and to the member churches to grow ever deeper into a communion, a communion with great diversity, a communion alone, that God alone has created. This is the adventure and the invitation of the Assembly Study Guide. Thank you so much, uh, Anne and Marissa and Dirk for um, starting to introduce us to the adventure. Now we are going to share with you two short interviews uh, which Philippa Hitchen did with uh, two other colleagues who contributed to the study guide, Chad Rimmer, and they're going to speak a bit about the examples we find in the study guide that are sort of an attempt to also look at how uh, we are actually working with one body, with one spirit, and with one hope. And then with Savannah Sullivan, uh, who is going to look into uh, youth and uh, their approach and their readings of the study guide. So 
We're going to play these two videos for you, uh, and then we will come back with Irineus Lucas. Chad, thank you for being with us today. Uh, we've been hearing a bit about the vision and the structure of this study guide. So let's take a closer look then at those three sections which are centered around one body, one spirit, one hope. Each of these sections outlines some of the key challenges or cries that demand our attention. Those are followed by the theological reflections. And then these examples of ways in which the LWF and member churches are already responding to the challenges. Just tell us about these practical examples. How are they designed to lead us deeper into reflections about the future of the communion? Yes, the, the form that we chose is actually based on a way of thinking theologically. So the structure itself invites everyone into a way of discerning um, what we're what is called in liberation theology, see, judge, and act. And in other words, we begin within that context of real life. And sometimes that's called rather dryly a contextual analysis. But what it is is an embrace of real life where people are, the real cries as well as joys. And then we can move to judge or discern what that reality is calling us to. And there are many ways we can think about those realities. And each of those logical frameworks are all important, like sociological, scientific, economic, political. But as a communion of churches, we want to move to think theologically. And that is according to the logic of faith and our shared hope. And when we do that in those sections, then uh, that contains the hope in what we know will be. And also, frankly, the anger and the courage that comes from seeing how far we have to go. And that can move us to help each other know how to act. And so we ask those reflection questions that will help us decide on those directions we want to take together as the LWF. That can be very practically in the shape of resolutions or statements on the floor of the assembly, um, but visions for, for uh, our work that is to come. So yes, that whole structure of the guide itself actually invites us into a mode of faithful discernment about our, uh, our communion's capacity to engage each other in this kind of reflection. So see, judge, act. How did you then go about dividing these examples up into the body, the spirit, the hope? Yeah, we began by hearing those groans that are caused in general um, by dualism and division and domination that disintegrate the unity among the, the body of Christ, the church, and then, of course, divide the human family along social, racial, economic, and other lines. And that extends all the way to the way the earth is being disintegrated as an ecological body. And as we heard those examples come from our member churches, those that we invited also to be part of the drafting process, and then examples from our life and work around the LWF. So we, we group those uh, divisions and dualisms, those cries, according to the different themes, cries of the body, cries of spirit, which actually includes, by the way, our actual spiritual cries, but also the competing cries of spirits of the age, like economy and politics and uh, um, uh, social identities that uh, tear us apart. And then the cries of injustice, that's our yearning for hope. Um, now, of course, there are overlap between those, those cries, because separating body and spirit is one of the basic dualities our faith is calling us to overcome. So they don't line up or divide out neatly. You, uh, you see there, though, some of our hope to bring them back together. So we begin in that way um, in order to hold that pain and the trauma with, with compassion, like Christ did, so that it can move us to see these, these cries, these realities, with new eyes and new ears to hear how hope is, is calling us forward. The last part of each section is then dedicated to these questions for reflection or discussion, kind of urging delegates to think about them, as you say, contextually, in their own context, in their own churches. Are these maybe then a kind of springboard, uh, suggesting that people respond or asking people to reflect on how to respond in their own regions? Yes, absolutely. First of all, those thanksgivings are meant to really provide hope-filled stories from around the communion. And that, they, they serve as a kind of prompt to help people see these seeds of hope that are being 
communion offers to the world. And then the questions take that form of asking, what is this in your context? And uh, that's intentional because this comes from Luther's catechism, which was a way for families to reflect together on our life of faith and then ask, what does this mean for us today, where we are in our relationships? So these questions are really a pedagogical way, a catechetical way to invite each member church and delegate to ask, how will we be signs of hope to participate in God's holistic mission of creating, reconciling, and renewing all of creation, that call that's been entrusted to us? How can we help each other in our context to make every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace, as the scripture says. And maybe most importantly, how does being part of a global communion of church to participate in this ministry of cosmic reconciliation, but in our local context. So that's the aim, Philippa, and we hope with one hope that the study guide itself um, equips our member churches and delegates to arrive at assembly prepared to respond to that call. Yes, indeed. Well, thank you very much for helping us to dive a little bit deeper and understand a bit more how this guide is designed for use by people right across the communion. Thanks very much, Chad. Thanks, Philippa. Savannah, great to have you with us here today, too. Yeah, this new study guide then uh, is offering quite a deep theological reflection on the theme of the assembly. How, how useful, how accessible do you think this will be for young people preparing for Krakow, perhaps particularly those without any kind of theological background themselves? So I think that the language of the study guide and the content is quite rich, which means that People will have to dwell with it for a while. I think that's true for young people as well. For any of us, there may be some specific words that are a little bit confusing or that we, we might need to look up. I hope this offers an opportunity for further reflection and to kind of invite young people to go deeper. But what I really love about the study guide is how accessible it is in its layout. It really, I think, helps to unpack each sub theme in an approachable way through these kind of four sections, the cries, the eyes to see, the thanksgiving, the questions for reflection. Um, this allows one to go deeper into some themes which might be quite complicated in tangible ways. And um, it doesn't shy away from the difficulties or the pain of being a person in the world or being a part of our communities. So I think that layout makes even dense material more accessible. I imagine you've been involved in some ways in the preparation uh, of this document. Tell us a bit about that, about your own involvement. Yeah, I was really honored to be asked to um, take a look at some of the theological reflections as a young theologian and give my inputs on those. I was also able to offer some of these uh, stories of Thanksgiving from the LWF Youth Program to highlight some of the work that young people are doing across the communion that might relate to one body, one spirit, or one hope. Um, and so I, I was really grateful that we are highlighting the stories, these stories of leadership from, from young people. Yeah, it's great to see these very practical examples, as you say, of ways in which the, the young people in particular are responding to the challenges that their churches are facing. Give us, if you can, just a flavor of these examples, what kind of things we can see there. Of course, there are a thousand examples that I could give for each of these sub themes um, because Lutheran youth around the world are doing such prolific work in these areas. But um, some of the things I just wanted to highlight are in the one body section, we talk a little bit about the work we've done to incorporate more theological reflection in some of our advocacy work, especially in, for instance, the youth led COP delegation, um, which has given kind of a, a a fuller body to the work that we're doing in in working toward climate justice to also include that theological perspective. We talk in the study guide, you'll see in the one spirit section, a little bit about the Global Young Reformers Network and the increased work that we've done within regions to connect one another in one spirit and also across regions um, at, to connect one another with one another as a global communion. 
And then in the One Hope section, you'll read a little bit about the Peace Messengers program. Um, there are some quotes from youth in there, but I just really wanted to highlight again the impact that the four Global Peace Messengers trainings have had between the last assembly and this assembly in Krakow. Um, and that's really kind of contributed to the One Hope that we hope pervades our communities. So just a kind of final question then, how will you be working and, and other youth leaders, how will you be working in the months leading up to Krakow to make the, this study guide and its contents as widely available as possible to young people across the communion? Well, at each regional pre-assembly, uh, we are having a youth pre-meeting and the youth in these meetings use this text as this study guide as a reference point for um, some of our conversations about priorities for the LWF in the future and for our own spiritual reflection. The same is happening with the LWF stewards, who are a group of young people who will serve at the assembly and who will uh, utilize this study guide to go deeper into the assembly themes and apply it to their own contexts. And then we're hoping to create some content on social media, including some infographics and reels that are uh, reflections from young people around the communion on these kind of three sub themes, one body, one spirit, one hope. So please look out for that between now and September. And we'll be no doubt hearing a bit more about it as well between now and September. But for the moment, thank you very much, Savannah, for being with us today. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Savannah and Chad, for uh, giving us a few uh, examples that uh, helped us understand a bit better. Now, uh, I have Irineus Lucas. Welcome, Irineus. Thank you. I think we have to stand sort of around the microphone so right. it captures both of us. So a couple of questions. You are the Regional Secretary for Europe, and we have just concluded the, the first Regional Assembly, which was held in Oxford uh, last week. Mm -hmm. How did it go? I think it went very well. Um, I think you and Dirk actually used the word adventure. And indeed, it's always an adventure where the communion comes together because we are coming from so many different contexts with so many different expectations. And I think now the expectations are also quite high because we would like to discuss so many things within the short time. So it's beautiful and it's challenging at the same time, but I can say it was a very intense, memorable, but at the same time, blessed moment of being a communion in the midst of our diversities but uh, the pre-assembly ended and this is my impression and conviction and this is what I've heard from so many different participants we ended as a reconciled uh, diversity as a reconciled communion uh, with many open questions but we are very much looking forward to um, being together with the global communion in Krakow. Very good this is your home country Indeed, this is my home country, so even more I'm looking forward, uh, you know, and to uh, experience the assembly in my whole country, in my whole context. This is something absolutely special, and, uh, and I'm, I'm really looking forward. So moving to the study guide, uh, what were some of the reactions you got from the first delegates to the assembly that had a chance to, to uh, you know, take a look at it, review it mm -hmm. as they prepared uh, for the pre-assembly and the assembly? Well, to be honest, I did not ask any participants, so what do you think about the assembly <laughs> study guide? But what is important for me, the assembly study guide, and this is what I've heard from many people, and it was expressed also indirectly, was like, maybe I, was used, I would use the example of a computer program which runs in the background, and sometimes we are not even aware of this, but without this program, mm. all other programs would not function properly. So that was my impression. Well, we actually shared the assembly study guide only in English a week before the pre-assembly. And of course, we have encouraged all participants to read and to study. I did not check if all of them read the study <laughs> guide. But at the same time, it's important for me to say that it was also not the expectation. We encourage all participants, but um, 
for me, a pre-assembly is this very moment yeah. where we would like actually encourage everybody to deepen this, to read it exactly. And I think it's not enough to read it once. Uh, we have also encouraged all participants to use it in their local context, to read it carefully, so I hope it will be used um, in this way. But I think Savannah used this word, she said, uh, reference point, and indeed, it was a reference oh. point in many conversations, and especially in cross-regional groups, because we are three regions, so we had on the first day regional groups, but then on the second day we worked in cross-regional groups with people from all three European regions, and then uh, many participants referred directly to the assembly study guide, and they found it as a, a very, very useful and a good and inspiring tool and material. Mm -hmm. If you think, uh, I mean, this is not your first assembly, so you have sort of prepared for an assembly before, from your personal perspectives, also on the basis of your, your sort of experience, how, how would you say this helps frame the discussions that are ongoing and upcoming? Um, I think it's hel it helps a lot. You know, I'm, in many meetings and interviews I'm giving now about the preparations and about the assembly, I refer quite often to the theme of the assembly, not only the, uh, this one assembly, but of all different assemblies. And for a person who is not involved in the whole process, it seems well, it's just one sentence. It looks simple. And sometimes we may even have the impression that the assembly theme is, it sounds, well, something we actually know. We've heard so many times uh, one, about one body, one spirit, one hope. So what does it mean? So there is a need actually to deepen this, to go deeper, to understand what is behind it, what is the process. And I'm so grateful to all the colleagues who help us to understand today what is the process behind it. So in order to understand the theme deeper, um, to see what is behind it, how many people work on this, I think this is, uh, uh, this is a tool which will really help us to deepen. Uh, and um, it gives some orientation, because already before coming and starting any conversations, you can just see so what, what kind of uh, discussions we have in the communion and in which direction we are going. So altogether, I think it, re it will really shape our conversations. It's an inspiration, it's a resource, and it's a very, very good uh, material. And I'm praying that um, to all people who will use it, who will read it, this will be a source of inspiration and motivation for our conversations in Krakow. Thank you so much, Irineus. Uh, I'm going to let you go now, and then we may call on you again as we, as we go into the questions and answers session. All right. Thanks Thank you. a lot. Thank you. So, inspiration, motivation, and uh, a guide for the adventure that is up ahead. Now, uh, we're going to open it up for questions for uh, a few minutes, in case you have any. I have my trusty mobile phone here, and I'm connected to YouTube. So, if you want to write your questions in the comments, you can do that. But we also have a few people here, if you, if, 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 if you have any questions. And if not, I will just ask a few. I mean, which is... so. Um, any questions from the room here? Alan, um, we have a microphone for you, so we will, we will loop you in live. No, th thank you, and congratulations on the launching of the study guide. Um, but of course, we all know that the launch of the study guide is just the beginning of uh, long, the long journey towards uh, the assembly. I think my question would be, wh what do you think would be the measure of success as far as the study guide is concerned? Like, uh, Dirk, when you can say, like, you know, I've, I've, I've done my job <laughs> as far as the study guide is concerned. <laughs> Thank you. Dirk, please comment. And um, what is the measure of success? Very difficult to measure success uh, when it comes to gospel realities. Um, but I would propose that um, when we come as a, as a church, as a communion of churches, to understand much more deeply our, exactly, our communion, to live into it uh, uh, more deeply, to to be uh, in a certain sense more or aware of one another across the globe as m member churches of the LWF, as churches all growing into the one body of Christ, I think if that awareness uh, is, is deepened, then we will have perhaps touched on something of the gospel. 
Thank you so much. Yes, we have another question. Carolyn. Yeah, thank you and congratulations from me as well. Um, I've been in this assembly study group as a representative of World Service and I think my question would be related to uh, the World Service staff. We have about 8,000 staff around the globe, uh, many of whom will of course not be at the assembly uh, and they will not be at the pre-assemblies either, but they might be interested in you know, some parts of this assembly study guide. So I'd like to hear from you what you would you recommend starting with? Or are there any particular parts that you think are more accessible or easier to understand, especially for those who may have little insight into Lutheran theology or theology overall, uh, but who would still like to kind of get a little sense and a little grasp of what we are going to be discussing at the assembly? Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, do I have any volunteers for for answering this? I mean, Dirk. Anne? Well, thank you for this question, Caroline. And in a sense, I would almost like to invite you to respond to that, because you actually uh, you actually represented uh, World Service in uh, in this process. And um, well, first of all, um, there are of course a number of examples also from uh, from the work the the World Service is doing across the world, um, and I believe these examples already in a sense give a direction uh, where the um, the meeting point so to say could be um, then secondly of course this uh, study guide is on the one hand based on uh, Lutheran theology also makes many references to confessional writings but then at the same time um, there are I believe there are many or let's say the general approach is very clearly directed uh, to to reflecting uh, how do we see inclusivity today, for instance? Um, uh, how do we see um, God's spirit? How do we understand God's spirit today? How do we uh, how do we or where are the let's say more difficult spirits of the age today? I believe there are many questions that are also more generally human questions, let's say, that might be very helpful also for our staff who are perhaps not uh, directly Lutheran in that sense. I, I think we might also wa hope that, you know, if they just, just, just read it and where you stop, ask a colleague. That, that, that could also be very valuable, actually, because I think the hope is that the study guide sparks conversations all around. And, I mean, it would be great. And, and we will share a little bit later a link to where you can actually download it and read it. So um, do we have more questions here? Um, I see no questions online. That That's okay. Um, if not, then I think we, we wrap this up. Uh, thank you all so much for joining us online. Thank you all who joined us here in person. Um, I think we have a slide with a QR code to download the study guide. You can all download it uh, on the LWF website and on the assembly website. As uh, we said earlier, we, we, we hope you will actually read it. We hope you will sort of engage with it uh, to, uh, to uh, prepare and come back to us with questions if you have any. Um, you can contact us through the LWF website and, and, and uh, we would be happy to speak to you about this. Um, you can watch this. There is one question. Glorious. Well, we have a, this is good. Thank you. So Torsten asks online, in the section One Spirit, uh, misleading theologies that are taking deeper root in our churches, specifically the prosperity gospel, are addressed. How will this topic be addressed in Krakow? Do I have any volunteers? D Dirk, Anne, thank you. Uh, thank you for this question, uh, Torsten. Um, well, of course, one space where this question, I suppose, uh, will come up uh, is the space of village groups, because this is the space where contextual realities will be addressed. And uh, and I, knowing well, knowing our member churches particularly in Africa, but also more generally in the Global South, and knowing how um, 
difficult this question it is for them. I suppose that uh, they will, in one way or another, bring it up in the village groups. Then, of course, we also have a thematic plenary on um, one spirit. And um, I foresee that um, in one way or another, it will also be addressed there. So these are the two main uh, spaces for dealing with this specific question. Thank you so much. Uh, we have a we, we have a comment here, but it's it's not really phrased as a question, which reads: the study guide prepares the church how to be vulnerable as bodies together, then maybe more than how to be successful as the body of Christ. Uh, I think that's a that's an interesting point. The assembly reference this is one of the members of the assembly reference group. Good. Thank you for uh, highlighting this. Um, I think we will wrap up now uh, again thank you all for joining us online and in person we are so happy to be able to formally launch the assembly study guide now and to hand it over to you so you can read it it's out in english now spanish is coming uh, in the next couple of weeks and german and french will follow and we are really looking forward to have this engaging discussion with you all around the theme one body one spirit one hope Follow the assembly on lwfassembly.org uh, or on our social media platforms. You will see a lot of materials from this. Um, that's it for now. Uh, over and out from Geneva. Have a lovely day, everybody. Goodbye.